On behalf of all assembled here today, I should now like to invite our newest alumni, Dr. Trudeau, to address convocation. I am so honored and I feel very privileged to be here today. Uh, thank you very much to Western University. Thank you, the Chancellor. And thank you to my friend Jim Weiss for all the support he's given me uh, from down here in London. Thank you. Uh, for me to be able to speak to you nurses, what a gift. I totally get where you're going. I, <laughs> I, I honor totally the discipline and the commitment that you've made to become nurses. What a profession, what a gift you must have in your heart already to give you the idea, the commitment to be a nurse. Uh, our healthcare system is wonderful. We all know that. It has its problems, of course, and we're going to improve those. But basically, uh, it's you, the nurses who make all the difference, because you're the ones who are at the front line. You're the ones who are comforting, who are alleviating suffering, and who are giving hope to people who are maybe unexpectedly or expectedly finding themselves in a time of terrible stress and fear. And I know myself that one of the things that helped me so much when I had to be hospitalized and taken care of uh, was the kindness of nurses, the way they could give you hope, they could give you encouragement, uh, just little small details in the day that made such a difference to someone who is alone and being treated for whatever ails them. The, ex the education that you've received here at Western, I can only tell you, will, n will give you such a head start because the problems are on the planet, not just here in Canada for healthcare. And you have the opportunity as, as nurses to travel the world and to give help where health is needed in the most, the farthest corners or right here. The openings, the doors that will open to you, the openings that you will have in life are huge. But let's be realistic. Being a nurse is a commitment to helping people who are suffering. And you're going to be witness to suffering, and you're going to feel the pain. You can't but. I have a sister. I know this from not for myself of what nurses go through. My youngest sister is Nurse Betsy. And she's the pride of our family, because she's the one who always gives us aid and comfort, who was always calm. But I've watched Betsy over the years. And I know that she comes home some days with such a burden on her shoulders from the pain that she's seen, or the heartbreak that the families around her have suffered in the hospital, but she comes home and she lives a very balanced life. She is a great cook and gardener. I had the experience and the pleasure to go on ski trips with nurses, and they knew, do know how to party. <laughs> uh, the first few days, we'd go up to Mount Washington. This is out on Vancouver Island. We'd, the crew of us would go up to Mount Washington. I thought there was far too much booze, if you ask me, <laughs> but great food, too. To, uh, ski so hard and at the beginning of the week they would be all talking about all their cases their issues their worries their concerns from work but I would watch them all come away from them all disappear from them, all the stresses as they got outside and played and shared with others and that's what I wanted the message I want to give to you today is that while your profession is so wonderful and the work you're going to do is so purposeful and necessary you have to balance it. You have to have a whole life that is work, that is play, and number one is sleep. I, I always have to say that because I'm a mental health advocate after all, and uh, without a good night's sleep, uh, our brain isn't going to work as well as it would. And I, I talk about brain health in my speeches. I try not to talk so much about mental health because I think our brain health is as important as any other part of our health. And taking the time and being mindful of the stress you're under. Burnouts happen. I've seen it with my sister. I've seen it with her friends. There's just so much pressure on you uh, on a daily basis. And you have to take care of yourselves. And you have to eat well and sleep well and play well. And you can travel the world. My 
sister travels everywhere. Nurses as well have the opportunity. Uh, Jim was saying that I, I work and have been and work for an organization that helps in Africa. If any of you get the opportunity to travel internationally, oh, Mother Africa is crying for help. Uh, any help at all means so much. Uh, we, we're starting in, in Africa. We start at the very basis of giving them clean water and sanitation. Uh, in the communities I go to, the one nurse that is there is considered the most revered and respected person in the community because she's the one that makes a difference between suffering and healing and getting better. I wish you all so well in your, in your incredible journey you're going to have as nurses. Uh, both men and women together, I think, can make a huge difference in our healthcare system. I want you to find a voice as well. Last uh, June, I was speaking to nurses, the whole country of nurses. They just got a report, the expert report done on the state of nursing in Canada. And there was revolution in the air. Everybody was very excited. Because I think you have to fight for the respect and the right and the authority that you have so, so hugely deserved in your occupation. And I think by having a voice, being part of your community, of being able to, to strengthen the whole nursing profession uh, to be the best that it can be. And I want each one of you to be the best you can be. And as a mom and as a mental health advocate, take time for yourselves and smell the roses. I'm going to tell you one joke just because I like everyone laughing and it has nothing to do. Maybe it's what you'll feel if you are denying that you have a mental health problem. There's a, a, a senior couple, and one is convinced that the other is losing her hearing rapidly. She is in complete denial. There is nothing wrong with her hearing. He goes to the audiologist. She won't go. He said, what can I do? And the doctor says, nothing. I ha she has to be tested with all these machines. Oh, no, you can test the length of the, the, the length of the depth of her hearing loss by going in distances of 10 feet, get closer and closer, and we'll hear how much she hears, where it starts losing. So he starts in the living room, honey, what's for dinner? No answer. He goes, keeps going, going, closer, closer, honey, what's for dinner? Finally, honey, what's for dinner? For the fifth time, chicken. <laughs> I only wanted you to laugh. That's part of being mentally well. Thank you so much, and congratulations deeply from my heart. Thank you.